Hello and welcome. I was just assessing this Elna Air Electronic TSP machine for service and the first thing I noticed is the I'm getting this sort of puckering issue here. Yeah, this this sort of carry on here. And if I um pull the fabric tight it it sort of comes right. Um, but if we have a look underneath you might be able to see there we're getting loopies that's underneath here. So the um, you can see the bobbin thread is this straight thread uh, that's heading along the bottom of the fabric there and we're getting all sorts of loopies and that's the top thread looping there. That's generally a symptom of the top tension being too loose. But if we if we have a look here we'll see yeah. that the uh, you know the tensions on four there that's you know a standard sort of tension that you'd expect to work well I'll show you what it looks like when it's actually sewing you see it gathering up there and there we have that puckering going on there so the first thing we, we probably really need to do is make sure the top tension uh, you know feels normal and um, that's the sort of thing that you know come, comes with experience, but it's quite a good idea to you know when you've got your machine threaded up to actually just have a wee feel of the thread tensions. This is the bobbin tension here. You know, just uh, when the machine's running well, you you can just get a uh, a feel for you know what the tensions should roughly feel like. So the bobbin thread's generally quite quite light, and the top thread here we can pull that through but uh, what you've got to be aware of is that you know when the, when you lift the uh, presser foot here that actually releases the top tension that causes the um, there's a little mechanism in here that uh, releases the tension from the top thread there so pulling the thread through while the presser foot is up is not a very good test for it so you, what you're best to do is un unthread the needle for a start um, because checking the um, top tension with the needle uh, threaded could cause the needle to flex and uh, break there. So if you pull the thread through the guide while the presser foot's up, you'll notice that, um, you know, by rights there should be very minimal tension there. That's by design. That's because the top thread uh, tensioner is, is being released to allow you to pull the fabric out. So then, you know, the, the real test is the uh, when we put the presser foot down, the tension release mechanism should uh, disengage and put more tension on the thread. Now I can feel that there is no more tension on the thread when I let the press foot down. So uh, it's changing slightly, very slightly. So that, you know, that should change quite a bit from hardly any tension there to press foot down. That should change and put quite a bit more tension on that thread but I can feel that it's not and that is a uh, surefire sign um, that the uh, there's something wrong in the tensioner here. Also just bear in mind that although this uh, sewing machine looks quite different you know you normally on a traditional machine anyway um, expect maybe the tensioner to, to uh, be down here in this area here um, but on this machine it's up on top of the uh, top lid here. The more modern machines, uh, you know, the, the tension is sort of hidden down in this area here, or it might be up in this area here. So all machines are different, but all machines, uh, you know, do rely on a certain amount of tension to be applied to the top thread. So one of the first things to check with any sewing machine when it comes to this issue is that there's nothing caught in these discs here. Now I'll show you how to um, get this little plastic cover off so that we can get a, um, a rag in there just for cleaning. I mean if, if the lint and gunk and whatnot's caught in this area here on this edge of the machine you know you could you could quite easily get a, a piece of rag in there and, um, and clean around there and, and get any gunk out um, but what that's not doing is not cleaning around this edge here because this little plastic 
uh, piece here stops the rag from getting around this edge so you know to properly clean this it's probably best to take the lid off and remove this cover um, but th this may work also just a, a quick go on there like that uh, uh, below and um, above the the little separator there I'll show you that in more detail you know that may do the job and then try threading and testing or uh, the other thing you could try also is just to uh, get a get a uh, can of compressed air or get you know a compressor or something if you've got access to one and just hold um, hold the discs apart with a little screwdriver and and just get a little bit of compressed air and blow in there and that might just blow in any lint or whatnot out there so um, you know below and above the uh, separator disc there so that could be worth trying as well just get a bit of compressed air in there so if none of that works then it's more than likely going to be a, a matter of taking the lid off and, and getting this cap off and doing a decent clean of those discs you know doing, doing the, this quick clean in here with the rag and and trying compressed air is really only just a, a quick way of just seeing whether you've got any lint and whether that's causing the problem in here um, you know thread the machine and test it if it fixes it well that's great um, you know it's not a deep clean it's not a complete fix um, if there's any uh, other lint sort of that you can't get to by doing this it's it's not going to clean that out um, which you know eventually could work its way uh, back into uh, an area where it's going to cause a problem again so you know um, that that this trick here might just be enough to get you going again but I would suggest that um, a deep clean of this area would be recommended so the first thing to do with this particular model is to remove these two screws here so um, bring the handle up there lift the lid and you'll notice that you won't be able to get the the lid off because the the, the handles hinged here so what we need to do next is remove this little e-clip here this little e-clip here needs to come off so that we can take the handle off and I find that is just easy enough with a screwdriver just make sure that you you know hold the clip with your finger there so that it doesn't ping away and we'll just get the screwdriver onto that and we'll just I'm just levering it out like that there there's also a washer there as well so just be careful that the washer doesn't drop down into the machine washer there and the little e-clip here and once you've got the clips off you slide the handle to the right there and it will just pop off the hinges there just like that and then you can go ahead and remove the handle so here we have the lid here and if we turn it over here we can see the tension assembly here now you can see you might be able to see there um, there's quite a bit of lint and gunk in here so I suspect that um, the problem will be that there's uh, lint and whatnot caught in between the tension discs which is stopping them from clamping down the thread so that's that's one thing that can cause this issue we'll make sure that this is clean um, but the other thing to um, look at also is there is a, a shaft here and that shaft is responsible for releasing the tension so you can see we're on we're on four there and if I push that shaft up it will release the tension you can't see it very well we'll get we'll, I'll take this cover off soon and we'll have a close look at that but just bear that in mind that this here as it's pushed up is releasing the tension so when you've got the lid off here you'll see there's this little uh, it's a little nylon bolt and when I lift the foot you'll see this lift up 
So I'm just putting the foot up and down there. And that nylon bolt there, which is adjustable, you can screw that in or out. Uh, so I guess if that's if that's worked loose somehow, I've never seen one work loose, but if, if say it's worked loose or someone's had a wee a wee fiddle, you know, it's possible that this here has been adjusted incorrectly and that that bolt is too high. And if the bolt's too high, that will hold this tension disc or that will hold this up and therefore releasing the tension, which you don't want. You want this to be clamping on the thread. And if the if the bolt set too low for the for this tension release here, that means that when you lift the foot, uh, this shaft won't get pushed at all, and therefore you know full tension will be applied even with the press foot up. So when you're removing the fabric from under the foot when you've finished your seam, um, the thread will be clamped tight here and here, and um, you know make it difficult to uh, get your work out from under the presser foot. The first thing to check would be just to make sure that that's not actually being released when uh, the press foot's down. You want this to be free, uh, you know, in its normal position. The setting for this tension release uh, bolt here is the is 5.5 millimeters from this uh, black metal piece here to the top of the bolt. So what you can do is just get a, a ruler and you know roughly check to see if that's 5.5 and it doesn't look like it on the camera but trust me it it is 5.5 uh, this rule is a little bit wide so you it, it doesn't quite um because we're not at the right angle uh, it doesn't quite look like 5.5 but trust me it is if you don't have a ruler that's got the measurements right up to the edge like that what you could do is you could you know mark a piece of paper get a piece of paper there maybe and mark Mark it like that, and then you could, you know, come in and measure the the distance there. So there's, you know, several ways that that could be done. One of the more accurate ways would be with a uh, set of calipers like this here, uh, where you could measure the distance here. And, you know, it's not far out. I would uh, stick with that. Okay, so that's the preliminary measurement for this here. The adjustment may be required. As long as there's a little bit of clearance between the, the bolt there and the tension release pin when the press foot's down, that's that should be fine. And when the press foot's up, as long as it does push on this to disengage the thread, uh, it should be fine. I would test that at a high tension there, number nine, to make sure that this is releasing this tension properly. So first thing to do here is we want to remove this uh, little plastic cap just so that we can get a better look in here. So just a standard Phillips screwdriver there. Just remove that screw and this cap will come off here and you'll see there are some uh, there's a thread guide in here as well, so it would pay just to give that a clean. Just get any any lint that you can see out of there. Have a close look, make sure there's nothing jammed in there. That's that's looking pretty good. And then we've got our tension assembly here. Now, if we have a look on the top here, I think I can see the culprit pretty much already. We have a closer look here. You'll see quite a bit of lint here. Now that that's sitting around the outside of the tensioner disc, so probably not um, affecting it too badly. But um, more than likely, the lint will be in, jammed in here. So I've just jammed a bit of lint in there just to demonstrate that. So what happens is the you know the lint is jammed in here and is effectively holding the tension discs open slightly and um, you know that that seriously affects the, the the tension because the instead of the uh, spring pressure being forced down on the thread itself it's actually forcing down on the lint and um, holding the discs open slightly so the thread is sort of you know freer to move through there which you don't really want you want this to be an accurate um, uh, tension uh, applied to the thread there 
Now if I push on the little shaft here you'll see uh, what happens with the tension release here. That's this disc here. This is under spring pressure. So I'm pushing on that. So when the foot's lifted that little um, plate comes up and releases the pressure off these plates here. You can see they're floating around nice and freely there. If I, you know, let go of this shaft here. So, so that's the same as putting the presser foot down on the machine. You'll see that the tension is a lot tighter. They don't sort of wobble around. And bear in mind that I've still got this tension set up to nine here. So if I go down to normal, we'll see, you know, there's still a little bit of tension there. But again, if you get a piece of thread and just run it through there, yeah, I can feel there's hardly any tension there still. So it's almost definitely a problem where the uh, lint is causing the issue here with it holding the discs open. If you don't really want to go and pull all this apart, you could try, um, first of all, just maybe getting a uh, piece of fabric you know like so you know doubling it over that's probably around four four layers there and what you can try and do is and get the fabric in between the discs now what you've also got to remember is there's a separator disc here as well so the purpose of, a, of the separator disc is so that you can run twin needle so you can have one thread going between the lower tension disc and the separator and you can have another thread going between the top disc and the separator and you know to facilitate twin needle operation. Now it doesn't really matter which side you do thread and when you're threading for single thread operation. So what you want to do is make sure that both sides are clean. So you know a, a quick and easy way of doing it is just to get a rag and pass it in between there and just give it a, a good sort of there you can see there's, that's probably the culprit there, this ear. That, that's probably what was holding the discs open. So, you know, a, a quick and dirty way of doing this is just to, to do that. You know, go right around there, drag it through. You can see that there's quite a bit of lint coming off here. And we'll, I'll just turn this over, get a clean spot there, and I'll go through the top section. You could put some cleaning fluid on here, just a um, mild sort of cleaner would be fine. Make sure that it's the tension discs are dry though, once you put it, you know, before you put it back together. So there we go. And I think that even just that, without sort of going too far, pulling all this apart, will probably improve the situation quite a bit, and get a piece of thread here, pull it through, yeah, so I can feel already that there's quite a bit more tension on that there. When you're ready to install the lid back on, we'll just put the little plastic cover back on here, just screw that back in there doesn't need to be overly tight, it's just screwing into plastic there so be careful not to over tighten that and then it's just a matter of installing the handle and the lid. Now the handle installs, you'll notice that this end here has a little cut out here it's for the stopper and the other end is there's no cut out so this is the left end, the end that has no cutout there. And the right hand end here has this little cutout here. So what we do first is put the handle down through the, through the lid here. And then slide the hinge pins through here. Hinge pin left and right. Just through the holes of the handle. Like that so that the, the hinge pins go through the handle, the holes in the handles there. And then it's just a matter of getting the washer on. 
and then slip the uh, e-clip on here. So the e-clip sits in a little slot on the hinge pin there. So then it's just a matter of pushing the e-clip into position there. Like that. And then we're ready to put the lid on. If you wanted to, you could test the machine without actually putting the handle back on in the meantime. You might want to leave putting the handle on until you know that everything's set up. In which case, just leave the handle off. Um, put the lid back on and then screw the screws, the two mounting screws back in and then you know go, go ahead and do your testing and if you're satisfied that you've got the the problem sorted well then um, you know you could then go ahead and um, put the handle, take the lid back off and uh, install the handle properly. Or, um, you know, if you haven't quite got it sorted, well then it's easy just to take the two screws back out and lift the lid straight off without having to mess around with the handle if you still need to do more work. Now as far as the um, service manual is concerned, the top tension should have a weight of 140 grams on it and um, the tension can be calibrated by uh, adjusting the screw up in here but if you I'll sh and I'll show that in another video um, but just to see whether you within Kui of it, this being correct if you could find a 140 gram weight and um, thread the machine and make sure that the presser foot is down at so at four and a half tension the thread should pull should just be slowly pulling down with 140 gram weight now if you don't have 140 gram weight you, I guess you could uh, contrive something and I've done that uh, just as a little experiment and it consists of a bag with a um, butter knife and two teaspoons <laughs> so this is really if you you know if you if you don't have a 140 gram weight handy you could I guess you could make something up so what I'll do is I'll um, thread the machine and hang this weight off it and at tension 4.5 the weight should just slowly pull the thread through the tensioner and at tension 5.5 the it should stop falling so let's see if we can um, get that to work I've just Put a bit of tape on this bag here and we'll see if I can get the thread through to hang that on there. So I'll just tie this tie this off here. Now this is not ideal but at a pinch I think this is probably going to work. Put the weights in the bag. So I've got the uh, bag hanging down under the desk here, so there's, you know, there's no um, nothing for the bag to catch on there. I'll go ahead and drop the tension, and it should start to run freely at about four and a half. And then when I crank it back up to five and a half, it should stop. So we're down to six, five and a half, five, four and a half, and it did four and a half. It just started to. Let's try it again. It just started to freely fall. So we're at five and a half. At about four it just let go. Yeah, actually if you if you just give it a little bit of a hand to get it started, it will slowly fall. that's at four and a half and that that's pretty close to what it's supposed to do just slowly fall down and there's no way it will um, fall at five and a half even if I give it a, a little bit of a helping hand yeah at five and a half it stops so you know at, at a pinch a bag and some kitchen cutlery if you've got a set of scales just measure it out to 140 grams there's also a setting for the bobbin as well 
I won't go through the bob and tension in this video. So I think that tension's pretty close. So now we can test this. Let's have, do a quick test here. Let's thread it up. We'll set the tension on four there. Okay. And there we go. Sorry, that's going to be hard to see. And there, that's the that's the back. So you can see there's no no loopies there at all. I would say successfully repaired just by cleaning the uh, tension discs out. I hope you found that helpful and uh, thank you very much for watching.